set up, I think we'll get going. Um, thank you all for coming today. I'm Valerie Morosco. I'm the Supervisor of Corporate Communications um, and part of the project team for the Event Center. Um, thank you for coming. We're at another critical point in the project. We're wrapping up phase four. Um, we've been saying since the fall that we hoped to have confirmation of funding and answers by March 31st. Um, the reason we asked you here today is there's a, an update on phase four of the proposed TVEC or Thunder Bay Event and Convention Center coming to council on Monday for information. Now there'll be a separate meeting on the 26th for decision on the recommendations. In your packages um, that you're getting today, there's a lot of information. The report is extensive. There's copies of the corporate report along with all of the supporting documents that were used in the funding <coughs> applications, both to the federal and provincial governments, um, as well as an outline of the proposed financial plan, um, a map that you see rotating um, on the screen. And that illustrates where there are large scale convention centers in the province. And you'll note there's absolutely nothing in the north. So um, that is all. That map is also part of your package, um, as well as attachment C. So I want to just take an opportunity to explain all the information that's included in here. Um, the purpose of the report is to provide the community and the media with a status update, where we're at in phase four, the CABO funding confirmation, um, to seek approval to extend the letter of intent with the private partner consortium, Thunder Bay Live, as well as recommend next steps, um, including proceeding to phase five, the detailed design and construction, subject to confirmation of federal and provincial funding, as well as um, approval of the definitive agreements with the LOI partners. So today, we're gonna hear from a couple people to help you understand um, all of the contents of the report. Um, we have Mayor Hobbs um, to speak to the project overall, as well as council. Um, Councilor Joe Verderamo, he's the chair of the Intergovernmental Leave Affairs Committee, um, who's been doing extensive work lobbying for support of the project. Um, we heard some recent results from their return of OGRA. Uh, as well, City Manager Tim Camisso in place of Michael Smith, who unfortunately has a wicked flu today and can't be here to speak to his report. As well as Lynn Martin, our Director of Financial Services, and she's gonna run us through the proposed financial plan. There's a lot of detailed information in here, and it's really important that um, the facts are, are clear. So we know that you like to do one-on-one -on -one interviews, but before we do that, we are gonna go through the Q&A piece by piece, so that as a group, we all understand what the key messages are, um, and then we'll have a chance to do the one-on-ones following. So with that, I will turn it over to Mayor Hawks. Thanks very much, Bill. I also want to recognize that the Council Frank Cooley is with us today. Uh, this is a very important project. As you know, it's uh, the talk of the town and we're coming down to crunch time. We don't normally uh, do this, this kind of media uh, conference, uh, but this is such an important uh, issue and there are so many different stories out in the community. Uh, latest one being the HL team in Winnipeg. And, I uh, want to advise you that I spoke with Mark Chipman uh, just last night. Um, he's a shrewd businessman, keeps his cards close to his chest as uh, good business people do. And um, we don't see any change uh, in, in his attitude. Um, they're going to obviously uh, give Winnipeg a, a try for the HL team. Um, he doesn't know how that's going to look at all. Um, we still have a letter of intent uh, signed with True North. And uh, he gave me no reason to uh, doubt that they won't be coming if we uh, build this. Uh, so on that front, uh, I'm still quite confident. Um, uh, Mr. Chipman is a man of his word. I, uh, I really have a lot of admiration for him. And um, it wouldn't be a good business practice for him to tell, be telling the media in the world uh, what his business plans are at this time. So uh, having said that, 
Um, this is a, a very detailed report, and um, we've done a lot of lobbying uh, at the federal and provincial level. I was talking to Minister LaBelle uh, yesterday, his office uh, in Ottawa, and we're on a daily, uh, uh, we're touching base daily um, with Minister Gravel's office, Minister Rickford and Minister LaBelle. Minister Rickford uh, has taken the lead on this. He asked us some time ago when we met with him in Sulaco that he wanted to take the lead on the federal side. So. Uh, he's in it, uh, we're in his hands, but we also spoke with Minister LaBelle's office yesterday uh, on the funding piece from the feds, and uh, at this point we see no reason that that's not going to come to fruition too. Uh, the drop dead date uh, was previously March 31st. We may have to extend that till the end of April uh, because we are actually at the mercy of the feds in the province and their uh, funding timelines for sure. Um, but this project, to me, 1951, the Fort William Gardens were built. I'm, I was born in 1952, and all my life I've been able to enjoy uh, the Fort William Gardens. Uh, the biggest naysayers that I'm hearing are those baby boomers like me. And uh, what I say to them is, uh, you know, you enjoyed the Fort William Gardens for all your teen lives and all your adult lives, and uh, you know, it's time for us uh, to pass on something to the next generation and the next. And that's what this project is all about. It's not for my generation. It's for my children and your children and their, their children. And uh, we're building a city. When we build a city, it's not just about roads. It's about infrastructure. And it's about uh, legacies for our children and our grandchildren and uh, attracting new business, uh, keeping this city vibrant. We've said that we don't want our children to leave. We want uh, facilities in place uh, that our children can enjoy when they work here. We've seen very positive news about employment and about job opportunities. We're seeing some action on the Ring of Fire finally. And we as a city council are going to plow ahead and build a city. And that includes a lot more than roads. Um, this uh, report is very comprehensive. Like I said, it talks about increased road work, not a decrease in road work because of this project. Um, the taxes, when we did uh, our survey uh, with Ipsos Reed, um, the, the majority of the people that were uh, surveyed said that they wouldn't mind paying a, a percent or a percent and a half to see this project come to fruition. Uh, this report is very responsible and keeps the tax increase uh, well below that 1.5. So I'm very happy with that. Um, there are different funding options here available. There's obviously a debenture involved. And um, we knew that all along because we only had 23 million uh, to start with in the uh, bill for the, in the uh, Renew Thunder Bay Fund. Um, so we knew all along that we were going to have the debenture. And even the debenture, to me, is on the, uh, the lesser side, so I'm quite happy about that in the report. Uh, council overwhelmingly uh, supported going to Phase 4, and that's where we're at. We're at the end of Phase 4, and uh, this report will be a recommendation to Council to proceed with five, uh, Phase 5 and put shovels in the ground. Uh, I'm 100% behind this uh, project, always have been. Uh, I look at it not as a legacy project for myself or this uh, council, uh, but for a legacy project for your children and grandchildren, and I, I'm maintaining that. I think we need to move ahead with this project. It's a great project for the city. Uh, Fort William Gardens, I had some great memories there. One of my scariest was getting between uh, Wally Pressinger and some big guy from uh, the Cambridge Hornets, and, uh, it was one of the most scariest times of my life, but it was a great uh, memory of the gardens, uh, banderamas back in the day, uh, dancing to, to um, uh, Eric Burden and the animals, House of the Rising Sun, five minute dance with a young girl, it was awesome. Uh, and those are the kinds of things, I did the keynote speech at Remembrance Day a couple of years ago, and, and those are the memories that we have, but you know folks, it's time to move on. Time to move our city forward, and that's what this report is all about. So our intergovernmental affairs, I want to talk about it. We've been at OGRA recently, uh, talking to provincial ministers. Michael Pavel has been a huge champion for this project. We've heard good things from uh, Minister Sousa, uh, from Minister Duguid, uh, from Minister Hoskins, all kinds of high profile <coughs> ministers. And we're hoping uh, for a good announcement from the province. But, uh, Councilor Bergramo is the chair of that intergovernmental committee, and I'm going to turn it over to him uh, to speak on that. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor Hobbs. Uh, I've been working on this project with the uh, committee for 
four or five years now. <coughs> it's a project, as the mayor said, uh, is a project that we need to uh, move forward with in the city. As the mayor suggested, infrastructure is not only a road, sewer, sidewalks, and whatnot. This is part of, a, of the city's infrastructure. We need this facility just like we needed the uh, Fort William Gardens in 1951, as the as the mayor said. It's a project that needs to move forward. The uh, the, the Chipman um, comment in relation for the HL team going to uh, Winnipeg, I, I, I'm optimistic for that because I feel that uh, it takes two years to have this uh, facilities built and uh, they just need a two year uh, layover somewhere else before they uh, they come to Thunder Bay. Uh, as far as the uh, the funding aspect of it, as the mayor has said, we have uh, petitioned the uh, provincial government and federal government over the years for uh, for funding, and uh, we will continue to to do that. And I hope in the near near future we'll have some uh, positive movement on on their part. The uh, as you know, the uh, the conservative government has stated on various occasions that uh, they're not going to fund. Uh, However, we do have a convention, a convention center portion of this, which uh, uh, can can be funded. Um, you know, very proud of council in relation to moving forward because at one point when we came back from OGRA, we thought that perhaps uh, <coughs> the, the plan could be downgraded a little bit, maybe a plan B or whatever. However, I believe that council has said, no, if we're going to do it, let's do it the way we said we were going to do it, and let's move forward with the uh, 5,700 uh, feet. You know, when you see the map of uh, <coughs> centers across the province, they're all over except for uh, northwestern on northwestern Ontario, and uh, it's something that we uh, we will uh, continue to uh, inform the, uh, the level other powers of government on that. And um, I'm, I'm I'm optimistic. Uh, people say, well, affordability. Can we afford it now? Can we do this? Can we not? When you take a look at the uh, financial situation in the in the province and the and the interest rates uh, seem to be at an all time low, uh, if we uh, wait, as some people have suggested, or you know, wait four, five, six, ten years, well, the 114 million dollars isn't going to be 114 million dollars. It's going to be way more than that. So what have you what have you done? What have you saved? You really uh, you're just postponing a, a larger uh, uh, infrastructure project to a later date, which would cost a lot more money. So. Totally in support of the, of the mayor uh, and his enthusiasm in this project, and hopefully the, uh, the community will get behind it. And the media yourself, uh, I know that we've had some positive comments on your from your part, and uh, we continue to look forward to your to your support and positive uh, outlook on this venture. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, just um, one, one other person I'd like to mention is uh, MPP Bill Morrow as well, Minister Morrow. Uh, has been uh, with us all along on this project as well and he was with us when we met with uh, Minister Sousa and uh, uh, really championed this project with Minister Sousa and Minister Sousa is the man uh, that's going to make the, the decision on funding so I uh, just want to give him a shout out as well. So I'll be uh, fairly brief. Um, <clears throat> I'm here with Lynn Martin, our, our Director of Financial Services and Lynn has been part of the team all along even though kind of sort of playing the a bit of a hidden role. Um, I want to also uh, thank Mike Smith, uh, his team, the staff team that essentially put together the report, but they've also been involved in working on what we refer to as the definitive agreements, and that's the uh, design build agreement, the license potentially with the uh, American Hockey League team, license and lease with Lakewood University, and an operating agreement. Uh, those are not obviously in front of council right now. What's in front of council is a report. So it's again a bit unusual that we're spending time here today, but it's a big report, it's detailed. We thought it would be an opportunity really to share. Uh, council has to decide. And you know, we, we're bringing the report on Monday as a first report. Hopefully they'll deal with it on the 26th that night set aside just for this. Um, we're asking for conditional approval. So subject to the funding and subject to us bringing back the draft agreements project would proceed and the reason that timing is important is that if we're able to uh, achieve the September 2017 deadline uh, we have to be in construction mode this summer so um, you know I, I just want to acknowledge I think that there's been a lot of work that's gone into it we've tried to answer potentially every question I think that would get raised we're not going back and repeating what was done in phase three we're building on that the facility is what was proposed and recommended and also supported by council so it's the full 
5,730 seat facility that'll go up to about 7,000 in concert mode. That's for the spectator facility, the convention component in total is about 66,000, which about 50,000 is separate from essentially the, uh, the arena floor. But when you add the two, it's about 66,000. So it's a very compact design, obviously located in the downtown waterfront area. Um, the cost, I'll, I'll ask Lynn to speak more about the funding, but the cost is in the same uh, ballpark, 114 million, 114.7 million is what was presented in September. Uh, we have a design build um, guaranteed maximum price now that's again part of a draft agreement. Uh, it's 98.1 million. That also includes the money we spent, the 1.4 million in phase three for the schematic design. So I think we're in a position where at the end of the day, bottom line, if you add in the dementia component, we're still looking at about a 1% incremental tax levy increase. That would be about $17 on a $100,000 assessment. So if you had a $200,000 home, you just multiply it by two, obviously, assessed value. Uh, that, that relates to about $35 a year. Um, that, it's important also to note that that would also be phased over three years because it would be a question of bringing on the facility and then also bringing on the uh, debenture repayment, which wouldn't happen until obviously the facility, after the facility opens. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Lynn and uh, she's going to speak more to uh, the financial piece. And on the Q&A, actually, on the back of the Q&A, provides a nice summary. I think it's uh, question seven. Where does the money come from? So Lynn? Thank you, Tim. <coughs> um, as noted, we're waiting to hear about provincial and federal funding, the final confirmation. But uh, what is left is 40% of the cost is going to be borne by the municipality, including Thunder Bay Hydro. In comparison to um, the norm for municipalities that build these centers, they've been funding 90 to 100% of the cost. So it certainly compares favorably um, with that. Of the city's uh, share of the funding, about 42 million, 23 million will come from the Renew Thunder Bay Reserve Fund, which has been set aside for this purpose since 2009. Um, and the resulting debenture funding that we will need to take on is 16.9 million um, over a 25 year period. So in total, the debenture payments for that would be just over a million dollars a year for the 25 years. And that, as Tim has referred to, would result in um, including the additional uh, other costs for operating the centre, about a 1% increase in the tax levy. So a couple other components of the funding, I think, I just want to acknowledge um, the private sector. Uh, we are uh, recommending that $9.5 million be drawn from what we see really as a corporate sponsorship naming program. We checked with other facilities. St. Catharines is the most recent example in Ontario. Uh, there's, you're able to raise significant dollars for naming. This would be essentially a capitalized component of that. We're also recommending on the hydro substation relocation. Everybody knows that that has to happen on the site. That council give direction to the board of directors of hydro, essentially to un not, on not only to undertake that, but to fund it. Uh, and the report recommends how they would do that. Essentially, as a result of that, it would be about a 50, cent, 50 cents a month increase in hydro rates. Typical hydro rate payer is about $110 a month. So um, fairly modest, but we want to acknowledge that and make sure that's transparent as well. Um, I go back to um, Lynn's comment about you know the 40-60 split. And it gets back to, you know, some people think we should just go ahead and build another arena. Well, if we're building 5,700 seats, we're probably at about 14,000, 13,000 a seat. So you're up in the range of probably 70, 75 million. The federal government and the provincial government have both told us if this is not multi-purpose, if it doesn't provide for that broader economic benefit, if it doesn't attract, uh, you know, different types of events, um, they're really not that interested. So the reason why it's, I think, important that it stays in keeping with what the approved design was is it allows us the best chance to attract funding and to get the facility cost down to about a 40% city share. 
the other facilities, quite frankly, which Lynn mentioned, the 90 to 100, most of those are arenas. And most of them are built, purpose built, you know, in communities like St. Catharines, Medicine Hat. Uh, and there's a chart actually in the report that gives a 20 year history of all of the mid sized facilities in Canada that have been built, their cost, and the, and the municipal share. So with that, I, Mr. Mayor, do you want to say any closing comments? Uh, I just think uh, we still have to hammer away at the economic impact of this project. Uh, just uh, 1,050 to 1,140 person years of employment just related to the construction alone, and 255 to 270 new person years of employment annually related to facility operations. So uh, this is a great economic driver. We've already seen uh, metamorphosis in the north core of the city, uh, new businesses springing up, new residential uh, the lofts, the uh, you know different condominium projects, uh, restaurants, and um, this is going to be a, just that crowning piece, I believe, in the north core. And, and uh, from there, we've already heard speculation that other businesses, other uh, hotels are possibly interested in Thunder Bay. So um, we believe that the economics of this project. Uh, far away uh, any costs uh, and I, I really want to get that out there uh, this is about building a city once again it's, uh, um, and, and we put record money into roads and infrastructure and we're going to continue to do that that's something that's also addressed in this report um, you know using uh, gas tax money isn't going to take away from infrastructure we're actually in increasing infrastructure spending <coughs> and that's something that I'm very proud of uh, as, a, as a mayor uh, the last term of council. We put our uh, heads down and uh, we're catching up on an infrastructure deficit that was left to us. $17 million infrastructure deficit, we're wiping that out. So there's no reason why we can't do both, uh, work on the infrastructure. And this is infrastructure, but people view it as a building. So uh, we're not going <coughs> to deviate from our plan. Uh, we're going to plow ahead and do everything. Um, so with that, so we'll go to take questions, I think. Yeah, I think this is a good time to just run through the key questions. Um, you know, most citizens, as well as yourselves as media um, folk, have a lot of the same questions, and they're important questions. So, why is the report coming now? I think it's the mayor said. Um, you know, I think it's important to update the community before March 31st. That that deadline is out there, and also. Um, you know, I think we need to provide certainty relative to certainly the uh, partners in the community that um, there is a viable financial plan subject to the funding coming from other levels of government that would allow this project to move forward. So it's a conditional approval. It's not, you know, it's cast in stone. It requires certain things to happen. That's not unusual. Uh, we do that with planning sometime and other things. It's just in this case, obviously it's, um, it's an important project and the largest project the city will have ever done. Uh, and the scale of the design that was approved in phase three by council has not changed? No, actually it's a uh, very same uh, that we pro uh, uh, produced to the city uh, and city council uh, previously. Uh, the cost has gone up uh, minuscule, I think, um, but uh, it's going to be a class A a project we it, it was out there that we were going to downsize maybe look at a plan b um, again once the uh, province and the feds commit or don't commit uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it but uh, for all intent and purpose right now we're plowing ahead with the original uh, scale Thanks, so um, you kind of just touched on this but the projected economic impacts should it go ahead Basically, the the, uh, the mayor spoke to that. It's you know the the number of years uh, of uh, work that's going to be provided, and also the uh, economic impact in relation to uh, new facilities, new businesses uh, moving into the city. That's going to be a, a huge uh, impact, just like uh, London uh, got and when they built their their center. One of the things I just add to that is uh, we expect 200 events, which is reasonable uh, per year. And of those events, we estimate about 32,000 new visitors to town. And there's a spending calculation with new visitors that's um, you know, tried and true. So it definitely is going to have a um, great tourism benefit. It's a product. It's a new product. 
complements hotels. Obviously, there's not a hotel with this. So we think it's, um, you know, it adds to kind of what Thunder Bay has, particularly given that it's, um, you know, in a downtown core, which provides the synergies of having the downtown core not only there, but also grow around it. I do want to speak to the Thunder Bay District Municipal League and Nolan Northwest Ontario Municipal Association. We have heard loud and clear from mayors throughout the Northwest that they want us to build this. Uh, their communities will uh, come to Thunder Bay, enjoy a hockey game. Uh, I'm going to talk about Costco again. When we have a Costco, we have an event center, we have a new waterfront, we have new hotels. Why would people want to go to Duluth? We want to put Duluth out of business, and I've said that for a long time. Um, I want people here, staying here for staycations, and we're going to attract people from the North Shore, uh, from uh, out of Oak and Fort Francis, to come here, shop, uh, enjoy a weekend, and stay in our hotels, and uh, have a robust economy. That's uh, what we should be working towards. If I could just add one more point. In the report, it gives a list of all the events, and that Tourism Thunder Bay put that together, um, that we believe over the next five, ten years, we can go after. These are things that don't come here right now, or if they do, you know, we're getting. Um, but these are the things that we'll see here regularly. And uh, when it says the World Junior, that wouldn't be us. That would be us in affiliation with somebody else, just to be clear. I don't think we could host the World Junior News. Does open a co-host opportunity though for us, yes? Okay. Um, so the updated cost estimate, has it changed since the end of phase three? Uh, the total cost estimate is 114.7 million up by 600,000 since the September phase three report as Mayor Hobbs has alluded to that it is not a significant increase. Do you want to add anything to? I think the report um, goes into the detail. It's up 600,000, but there's some ups and there's some downs, there's some offsets. So again, um, we, uh, Mike uh, Smith and his staff uh, you know, have done a good job in trying to explain all of the, the information around the cost, including the guaranteed maximum price, which is the most, the most significant component of that cost. So there's a finer point on the, the detail. Yeah. Okay. So what is the status of the funding? That's probably one of the most important questions that everybody is asking. Again, we just got back from Ontario Good Roads uh, where we met with the key ministers. Uh, Minister Grudel is our champion for this uh, project. He was actually part of his campaign uh, platform when he uh, got re-elected uh, as uh, MPP and then, uh, minister again. And uh, we're very confident uh, that the province is gonna come through. And I've been on the phone and uh, emailing and texting with Minister Rickford and I was on, on the uh, phone to Minister LaBelle's office infrastructure uh, for the feds as uh, recently as yesterday and um, we're not hearing bad things so I'm taking that as a, as a positive for now. Okay. So in the proposed capital financial financing plan that's included in the report, Council will review Monday, where will the money come from? Can you just run us through the breakdown? Sure, attachment A to the report uh, indicates the sources. So the provincial funding is uh, expected to be a total of $36 million. And uh, total federal funding of $23 million, uh, largely comprised of using our federal gas tax funds uh, towards this project over a period of uh, uh, seven years. Um, the private sector, uh, including naming and sponsorship revenues, is uh, about $9.5 million of that. So that uh, leaves uh, 46.2 million, including the contribution from Thunder Bay Hydro towards the relocation and reconstruction of the um, substation. Um, of the municipal side, the new Thunder Bay is $23 million, and the uh, tax supported debenture would be 16.9 million, and then an additional $2 million from the land development account towards that. Uh, property acquisition where required. So that's where the money is coming from uh, in terms of the capital financing. Okay. And ultimately when we talk about debenture and we know we went out to the community with the Ipsos Reed survey, um, we asked residents how supportive they would be of a potential one up to 1.5 percent tax increase. So with this plan, what would be the impact on property tax owners, property taxpayers? 
Uh, this impact is slightly less than what was presented in phase three report uh, in September 2014. It was projected to be 1.1% of an incremental uh, tax impact, and this would be uh, approximately 1% phased in over the, the three year period of construction. And as Tim mentioned earlier, that works out to $17.16 uh, per hundred thousand of current value assessments. Those are, those are the hard numbers, but it, I still maintain that we're going to see growth as well. So growth is always uh, factored in when we budget. And if we have great growth as a result of this project, which we are anticipating that we will, um, hopefully that will offset some of those tax increases. The way I would just put a finer point on that, um, if in the downtown area or in the surrounding area, we see the same type of development that's at Prince Sessions Landing, that would generate the equivalent taxes essentially to cover the cost of the operating of the facility. Uh, so that assessment, you know, between the, the condos and the hotel, roughly, you know, we expect to be in somewhere in the range of about a million to a million and a half dollars in additional tax revenue to the city, which is essentially covering the operating cost. The other thing I wouldn't mind touching on is the debt, uh, debt service ratio and how that, that's affected, because that's dealt with in the report as well. Um, in March of 2014, City Council approved a recommended debt management strategy and within that strategy there were uh, established limits for debt service ratios which actually uh, is based on what your debt payments are during a year compared to your um, own source revenues. And the limit that Council um, approved was for tax supported borrowing 7.5% as a maximum debt service ratio. And the additional borrowing with the um, event center projected to start coming on board in 2018, we will be well under the 7.5% maximum. We will be about 5.6%. Uh, so it's within the guidelines and the strategy that uh, council approved in March. I would just add that most municipalities, when they do this, they take out a big dimension and they get approval from council to do that. Um, some may have some other financing, but if you look at St. Catharines, essentially that's what they've done. Now St. Catharines, you know, had to replace an older facility to retain a OHL team, so a little different scenario, but uh, we're trying to minimize the amount of debt on this project, and but still, it, it's, it, it's a component that you would normally see on these larger projects. Because the other thing it does is it spreads out the payments, so there's an equity component, future taxpayers, are also contributing towards the cost. Any other questions that we didn't address in the Q&A before we break out? So I'd just like to thank everyone for coming out. Um, uh, thanks for your participation and we'll answer any questions you like. Thank you, thank you all.